Hi everyone, my name is Thibaut. I'm a developer at Shopify and with Matt and Ryan, we're gonna walk you through the new theme architecture in Onan Store 2.0. We'll start with what's changing in the themes, then talk about what meta fields are and how will merchants use them. And finally, how we're combining themes and meta fields to make the theme editor extremely powerful for all merchants. Let's get started. A few years ago, we released sections. Section files go in the sections directory of a theme. They use Liquid, or homegrown templating language, to produce HTML. As the name implies, sections are intended to be dynamic components for a chunk of a web page. Think header, footer, or in this example, the title and content of a custom page resource. Merchants can then customize sections in the theme editor without ever seeing or modifying the theme code. Here, we see our page section rendering an about page surrounded by other sections. One of the great things about sections is that you can make what they render and how they render it dynamic based on a configuration that merchants can easily customize in the theme editor. We support settings equivalent to UI inputs in the sidebar of the editor for things like checkboxes, drop downs, various kinds of picker. We also support blocks. As you'd expect, there are containers of settings that can be added, removed, and reordered within a section. For example, here's a schema for an image with text section. There's a setting for the image and two blocks for the content that goes beside it. Here's what this example looks like in the UI. Now, as many of you know, our first release of sections came with a significant limitation. You could only add, remove, and reorder sections on the home page. You could use them elsewhere, but they were fixed. This turned out to be a very hard problem to solve, in part because of the way we store data and themes and the flexibility we give themes to be unique. But I'm happy to report that, as many of you guessed, we finally have sections everywhere. Let me show you how it works. Template files are the root of the code that renders a particular page. They go in a templates directory and follow a name convention based on the page type. Like sections, they contain liquid code, but unlike sections, they cannot be configured through the UI because they lack structure. Here we have an example of a template rendering custom pages like an about page. Today, if you wanted to use a section for this template, you'd end up with something like this. Just one section tag in a liquid file. That's obviously suboptimal. When we released sections a while back, we made it possible to render sections in a template as a progressive enhancement. But as you can see here, the template file doesn't serve much purpose anymore. And while the section can be customized, more sections can't be added to the UI since this liquid file remains unstructured. So with Uninstall 2.0, we're giving you the option to create structured templates that can be customized through the UI. Here's how that works. This template file uses JSON instead of Liquid. It has properties that define which section should be rendered and in what order. This is a similar format as the one we're already using for sections in the settings data JSON config file. It's a list of sections and their corresponding data. But now the data is structured in such a way that the theme editor can customize. As a developer, you can create as many of these templates as you'd like, which act as starting points for merchants. Meanwhile, after installing your theme, merchants can create some of their own through the theme editor. Merchants can then assign those templates to individual resources or groups of resources like products in the admin. For example, let's say I want to create a unique landing page. I could add sections to this template, but I would add them to all my pages since this is the default template. So instead, I create a new template in the theme editor and customize its sections to my liking and assign it to the particular page I want to use it for. After all this, I have a new JSON template in my theme with two sections, main, which came with the templates and displays the page's main content, and image with text, which is a section I added in the UI. I can reorder, delete, customize all these sections through the theme editor. That's JSON templates. You can use them for every page type, but you don't have to. As usual, we're releasing this feature as a progressive enhancement. Liquid templates still have their use cases and they're not going anywhere. You're free to use both types in your themes. That's sections everywhere. Now, there's an obvious problem with this example. Part of the content of the page is stored in the template file, like the text you see here. That not only bloats the theme, but it also makes it so the content cannot be reused either in a different channel or another theme. This is where meta fields come in. 
Matt is going to show you how that works. Thanks, Thibaut. One of the things that we've been working to evolve at Shopify is our data extensibility. Data extensibility is nothing new. In fact, it's been at Shopify for years under something called Metafields. I'm going to give a quick summary of what Metafields are, as well as show you some of the new things we've been building on top of Metafields in order to make it easier for merchants to use. First off, what is a Metafield? A Metafield is a way for you to store extra data in association to your resources. Let's take some products and some customers on your store. Using a namespace and key, you can store extra data in association to these individual resources. That's what Metafields are. They're a simple key value store. They're defined per resource. And third, they're accessible via the API. This means in order to create, edit, delete Metafields, you need to do it via the GraphQL or REST API. This means that for the most part, they've been unknown to merchants. Here's some of the limitations we found with Metafields. First off, you can't configure Metafields across resources. Let's say, for example, you want the same Metafield to exist across all your products. There's no way to configure this. Second, the data, for the most part, is unstructured. Third, there's no UI to manage them. Here's some of the new things we've been building. First, a new concept called Metafield definitions. I'll show you what that is in a second. We've also added richer typing. You can now store things like dates, times, product references, file references, and so on. Third, we've made it so you can manage these meta fields in the admin UI. Let's start with meta field definitions. Here are a couple of resources at Shopify. You have product and customer. On a product, you have certain fields like title, description, price, and so on. Using meta field definitions, you can extend these core models. Let's say, for example, on top of your product, you wanted to add a subtitle or a color, and on top of customers, you wanted to add a birthday. Metafield definitions are a way for you to configure these extra fields. What lives inside the definition is a name, a namespace and key for accessing, and also a type, which tells us the type of data that you want living inside these metafields. These end up acting as a template for how Metafields should behave across all of your resources. So, what can we use these new definitions for? Well, there's a few different ways that we've started to integrate Metafield definitions across our platform. First, we added new admin UI. Let's take a look at the product details page, for example. With definitions, we know what Metafields should belong on a product so we can render UI for these fields natively. Further, because of our new typing system, we can display rich UI based on how the definition has been configured. If it's a date, we can display a date picker in the UI, and so on. We've built these new UI experiences in our web, Android, and iOS clients. Another place we've improved integration is through Liquid. Metafields in Liquid is nothing new. You've always been able to access Metafields in your Liquid templates. You could access them by using the syntax metafields.namespace.key. This simply spit out the raw value that was stored within the Metafield. Here's an example. Let's say I'm storing an image in the namespace my fields and the key hero image. If I were to render it in my template, it would simply spit out the ID of the image. That's because the ID is what's being stored in the meta field. This is the way meta fields work today in Liquid, and they're going to continue to work this way. Obviously, though, this isn't the most useful way we can render this data. That's why we've added something called meta field tag. It's a new filter. Knowing the type of data stored in the meta field, we can use this tag to render a snippet of HTML that's most semantic to the type of data being stored. So if we're storing an image, like in the case of hero image, rather than rendering the GID, we can render the image itself using an HTML image tag. We've also added a new syntax to dig directly into the object being stored. This is done using dot value. Let's take the image example. If you wanted to access the image object itself, let's say to get the width, the aspect ratio, or maybe the source of the image, 
Using the namespace dot key, you can then also use dot value and then the attribute you want to access. In this example, I'm grabbing the actual source of the image by doing my fields dot hero image dot value dot source. With it, I can do things like resize and crop the image using the same tools that already exist in Liquid and the image object. Liquid is useful when you're hard coding a specific field in your theme. But we don't want merchants to have to edit code. So we've also started to integrate with the theme editor. In order to demo this, I'm going to pass it off to Brian. He's going to show you how you can use meta fields when you're configuring sections in the theme editor using something called dynamic sources. Thanks, Matt. I'm going to be walking you through some of the ways that sections everywhere and meta fields come together in the theme editor to provide merchants with a really powerful editing experience. So I'm in the theme editor now and we're looking at my default product template. So this is the template that renders all of my products. And if I go ahead and add a section here, an image banner, and I'll also add an image here. I'm on my wooden stool, so I'll add an image of a wooden stool. This looks pretty great, uh, but there's one problem here. Now, if I was to go to another product that uses the same template, it's rendering the same image because this is just the same section on, on the template. And what merchants might really want here is for the image to change based on the product that's being rendered by the template. And we can, we can do that now. Um, so I'm going to go back to this setting and I'll remove the image. And you can see here, we have a new button that says change dy or connect dynamic source. And if I click on this, what shows up are all of the meta fields that I've defined that can be used as images inside of my theme. And so I've defined a, a hero image on all of my products and I've added product specific images to that meta field. And so now if I click this, you can see it works just like the image picker did before, but this is a dynamic source. So when I switch between products, the image changes. So this is pretty cool. And, and one thing you might be wondering is how, how would I integrate this with my themes? And the answer is that it's quite simple. You actually don't really have to do anything to integrate this with your themes at all. Um, the same sections that uh, you built before uh, are compatible with this. We haven't changed any of the APIs that uh, you receive in Liquid for rendering settings. It's the merchant that gets to decide if they want to use a dynamic source or a static source as they did before. And all of this happens in the theme editor. So while dynamic sources do just work with the way that themes are already built today, we have found that this feature does change some aspects of how you might build your theme. In particular, it opens up some new options for how you might reference properties of resources inside your sections. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to contrast how you would render something like a product vendor with dynamic sources and without dynamic sources. Um, and to do this, I'm going to jump into a little bit of code. Um, so this is a, a different section from the one that you were just seeing. And um, it has a vendor specific block here. And so this sort of represents a typical way of how somebody might um, insert a product vendor without dynamic sources. Um, and you can see here, the vendor is just hard coded into the liquid. And to give merchants some flexibility, it's been hidden behind this uh, show vendor checkbox setting. And so I'll jump into the theme editor for this section here. And you can see uh, we have the vendor here in the same place. And we have this checkbox setting, so I can uncheck it, get rid of it, check it, have it come back. This works, but it's a very rigid solution, and it doesn't provide merchants with much flexibility to render things beyond the vendor here, which they might want to do. And with dynamic sources, we've uh, given you more opportunities to build your theme uh, in more flexible ways that allow for additional use cases here. So if we look at this block here, this is a, another section. Um, you can see instead of having a vendor specific block, I've just created a generic text block. And instead of rendering the vendor directly in the text block, I've rendered a, a text setting. And let's just jump down to the setting schema here where I've defined the setting. And I've done something interesting here. I've uh, set the default value of this setting to be the product vendor. And so by doing this, I, I give merchants a very similar experience out of the box where the, when they add this block, the vendor will show up by default and they don't have to go and insert something in the theme editor if they don't want to, but it also doesn't lock merchants into using the product vendor. They can change this if they want. 
So I'll show you what this looks like in the theme editor. Um, and you can see the UI is pretty different. Instead of having a checkbox here, I have uh, a text input. And you can see the vendor is here by default, and it's rendering in the same place. But I can just get rid of it, uh, because this is just a text input. And I can add static text. This could be whatever I want. Um, or I could get rid of that and use the uh, dynamic source picker again. And this will now show meta fields and other properties of your products that uh, are compatible with text settings. So here I can choose a product subtitle or any custom meta field that the merchant has defined. So this is just one small example of how themes become more flexible with meta fields, sections everywhere, and dynamic sources. We're really excited to see what you do with this. And with that, I'll pass it back to Thibaut, who has a few more words to say. Thanks, Brian. This concludes our overview of the ARM Store 2.0 theme architecture. Now, you may be wondering when all of this will be available. Everything we showed you today is available on your dev stores right now, and it will be rolled out to merchant stores starting next week. To learn more about themes and how you can use all these new features, go to shopify.dev themes. Thanks for watching.